All right, man. Uh, somebody at ESPN said that the Lions have drafted in 2020 the most immediate impact, impact uh, rookies, but they only believe that uh, Jeff Okuda will be the only superstar. But it's projected that Okora is going to be a starter. Jonah Jackson is going to be a starter. Obviously, Swift and Jeff Okuda will be starters for the Lions in year one. So let's talk about that. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the videos. And Stenberger could be a, a starter as well, too, at guard. I've been putting emphasis on that the Lions could start two rookies at left and right guard. And if they ready and they beat out Joe, uh, Joe Dow, Kenny Wiggins, and uh, whoever else out there, the kid from Wisconsin that we drafted, undrafted last year, if they can beat them, those guys out in the Lions, don't bring any extra help, wink, wink, like Larry Warford at guard, then you can see the Lions legitimately put out two rookies on the offensive line. And you could have a rookie basically getting starter carries and starter touches out the backfield so the Lions can feature three rookies you know, next year, week one, versus the Chicago Bears in the starting lineup or playing starter like minutes. And on the defensive side of the ball, we know Okuda going to start and Okora could start as well, too. So you may see a situation where the Lions, you know, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth round picks all, you know, the majority of them all could freaking start next year. And, you know, that's what you want. You want impact, you know, right away. You want guys that's going to get out there and that's going to learn the game and that's going to uh, produce, you know. And does that say anything about the Lions' current roster? It says something to a certain extent because you just drafted Kerryon Johnson two years ago, Tyler Johnson last year, and the rookie can come eventually or eventually and, and take that spot. So that's letting him know that you really can't draft and you got rid of Darius Slade, put Okuda in there. Well, Cora, we need as much pass rush as help. So this lets you know the roster just wasn't up to par, but this is what the draft is for. And I believe that a lot of these dudes going to have impact and they're going to get better as it goes. You know, don't forget, you have probably you might have a second-year player in Will Harris starting in secondary, and you might have a second-year player in Armani Araki starting in the secondary as well. So, you know, this lets you know they're getting better at drafting. I feel this was Bob Quinn's best draft. I think this is the best draft in three regimes. You know what I'm saying? I think – uh Mayhew had one good draft when he had Brian Sanders the first year, and they had a great draft. But other than that, this might be the Lions' most complete draft on paper. But I do believe that the immediate impact players, you know, they, they're going to make some mistakes. Rookie make mistakes early on, you know what I'm saying? And they're going to make mistakes in training camp. They're going to make mistakes in preseason, week one, two, three. Right around week eight, you're going to start seeing guys turn the corner. And if the Lions are able to get starter production, out of these guys, then, you know, that just opened up the cap space to bring in better guys, so, down the line, but I do believe that, you know, they got about four or five starters that's going to start, unless they bring in some more help from, you know, free agency, you know what I'm saying, so, you know, because question, should they bring Mike Daniels back, or should they go out there and sign Marcel Darius um, to help in the front, I believe so, you know, you just bringing those guys in to be relief players, to relieve Danny Sheldon, to relieve Deshaun Hand every now and again, but, I see the I see the talent. You know, I do think they have the most draft ready guy. They drafted the most draft ready guys in the league, and some other guys that made the list was Baltimore, Denver, and there's a few other teams in the article I drop in the description. But you know, Baltimore always draft well. Denver drafted a whole bunch of help for Drew Locke, and they got to keep up with the Kings of the AFC. Uh, was it the AFC West with the Kansas City uh, Chiefs? So they got to keep up with those guys. But I do think the Lions got a lot of impact ready guys. Um, day one ready guys is going out there and do well. And obviously we expect Jeff Okuda to go out there and be immaculate, but he will make mistakes too. He will get beat. He will get called for holding and pass interference. And, you know, he will learn, but, you know, really should be concerned about a lot of the year two guys going into year one guys going into year two, you know, because those guys are going to be the, the true difference makers as far as his team. It will, will, will Harris, you know, make a great, you know, contribution this year. Well, he kind of figured it out towards the end. Can he keep that rolling? Amani and Rockley, I don't think Desmond Trufant is going to hold up in his defense uh, for, for 16 weeks or 16 games. I just don't see it. Okay? Uh, Tavai, you know, Reggie Ragland, he really, he an okay guy. He's a good one and two down, first and second down middle linebacker. But in Jared Davis, we didn't see what he got. But Tavai, it's your time. You know, uh, TJ Hawkinson, you know, it's your time. A lot of these dudes didn't step up last year. And produce like they should. Hawkinson had the the flash week one, 
And then he didn't flash again. <laughs> His last flash was trying to jump over the Kansas City defender. And then you go and look at, uh, you know, Will Harris. He struggled a lot when they got rid of Quadre, but towards the end, he figured it out. Arakwi, he was dealing with injuries throughout the season, but the year two guys are going to be just as important as those these rookies starting to produce. And it's going to show if the Lions have a problem with, you know, for uh, development. You know, the year two guys is what you're looking at. Those are going to be the guys that if the rookies do well year one and they're able to come in here and be adequate about uh, be adequate at their jobs, then Hawkinson is going to be the difference. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, Will Harris can be the difference. Amani could be the difference. Tavai could be the difference. So it's pretty much going to be the combination or the mixture of the rookies coming in, the second-year guys doing what they got to do. If we can get some guys year one, we can get a pro bowler in Jeff Okuda. Year two, Hawkinson can turn into a pro bowler. Uh, year two, Tavai can be good. Year two, Amani can go out there and be what he was towards the end of last season, then you might have a situation where the Lions might have a few new All-Stars coming up, Pro Bowlers coming up. You got Kenny. Stafford was on them MVP-type role, had the defense play better. You know, uh, you still got, you know, Marvin Jones doing he do. Marvin Hall, if he can develop and he can learn to run the route tree and take over in the slot for Danny Amendola, you know, you got a lot of things that's going to hinge on development. And over the course of time, the Lions haven't been able to develop the Bill Bentleys, the Alex Carters, the, you know, Ryan Bros, the Titus Youngs. They haven't really been able to de or develop them, the Mir Abdullahs, and get the best out of them. The Boss Baileys of the world. The, you know, you keep going on and on with the guys that they drafted over, over the course of time. They haven't been able to develop them. Tease Tabor. You know, development is the key for the Lions. And they really count on a fast development, an instant development, like how you instantly transfer your money from Cash App to your debit card. They count on that instant development. That's what they count on. They count on the instant development of the, the rookies they, they drafted that they need to start and play prominent roles. And then they 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 hoping on the development of a lot of two year two guys. And what's going to make it hard for that is Mike Tomlin said it wouldn't be fair if the, all the facilities don't open up all, at one time. If some get to open and some don't. And with Gretchen Whitmere, you know, uh, playing hardball with the stay-at-home order, the Lions would be one of the last uh, uh, facilities to open up, right along with the New York teams as well, too, that play in Jersey. So it's got to be fair to open up all these you know, facilities at once, but... We know life isn't fair, but in my opinion, I definitely want to, I definitely would like to see um, them, you know, have a full off season and be able to get in there and teach these guys what they need to know and kind of knock off the rust and knock off, you know, the bad tendencies and stuff of that nature. So um, the Lions pretty much, they play off hopes and Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn, you know, a tenure here on getting extensions and, you know, playing out their contract hinges on year one and year two player guys. Think about it. You know what you're going to get from Stafford if he's healthy. The three veteran receivers, you know what you're going to get. Jones, Galilee, and Amendola, all if these guys are healthy. Ragnar, you know what you're going to get. Decker, you know what you're going to get. A good pass blocker, but not a good run blocker. On the defense, you know what Hand can bring when he's healthy. Flowers going to bring about seven sacks, eight sacks. You know, you know what you're going to get out of Jamie Collins. You know what you're going to get out of Christian Jones. You've been getting the same shit out of him every year. Coleman, you know what you signed up for with Trufant, you know what you signed up with with Tracy Walker, so, you know, you're really looking at Will Harris, you're really, you're really looking at those, those, those Armani Arakwi, the um, Okuras, the Tavayis, the, the Hawkinsons, you know, nobody really speaking on Hawkinson enough, if Hawkinson come out there and produce, this offense has a different dynamic, Amendola becomes that much more you know, free to do what he want to do and, and run, you know, the complete route tree and Calladay going to see a lot of one-on-ones. Johnson and Swift going to see a lot of one-on-ones out the backfield. And Marvin Jones going to see a lot of balls. So, you know, to be honest, the blocking, the running game, and then whatever, you know, if Hawkinson can have the year one and year two jump that, sorry, my neck, George Kittle's had, you're looking at, you know, you're looking at the Lions offense being that much more potent. If they can get the run game and they can run block and protect Stafford and they get that out of Hawkinson, um, the Lions offense should be able to average 30, you know what I'm saying? But if it was a fifth, we all be drunk. The chances of all that happening simultaneously is probably slim to none. And the chances of all this happening and the Lions developing rookies like 
with little or no training camp and OTAs and mini camp and them being virtual and then the chances of you know the year two guys developing is slim to none. The Lions haven't really developed a lot of their middle round guys over the course of time. But hey, let me know what you guys think about the video. I'll drop the article link in the description. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Appreciate everybody who check who checking in. You can always reach out to me there if you have business questions, quality response, your video requests, want to make a donation to the channel, cash out, PayPal, description, one time for the one time. Y'all know what the business is, we gone.